Wineland is an old Dutch name. She traces her ancestry back to the 17th century in New York. So she's old society, old New York, old New York. That's the Asser Edith Lewis. The family's related to the Assers in New York. I'll put that well here, but they're very comfortable. And the house that they have on West 23rd Street in Manhattan is still there. You can go and visit it. It's a Starbucks coffee shop now. There's a little sign outside that says Edith was born here. And in that house, her father had a small library. And even before she could read, she's pulling books off the shelves, pretending she could read. But she had a love of literature from a very early age. When the Civil War ends in 1865, there's a, as you all know, there's an economic recession. The father's income starts to be reduced. So he moves the family to Europe to live for the next six years. That's where they live. They live in Italy and France and Germany, visit England and Spain. Edith came back to the age of 10, speaking French, speaking Italian, and learning German. She really was a child prodigy. But what she really loved in Europe was the architecture. She liked the, the Roman ruins, the copies of the Greek, the symmetry of them, and the proportion, the balance. And when she builds this house in 1902, she incorporates a lot of love that she has in architecture. She gets back to New York. Uh, she's presented as a debutante uh, at the age of 18. She absolutely hates it. She feels like she's being marketed, like she's being put on display. Uh, turns out Edith is a very private person. When she builds this house, you may not have realized it when you approach it, but you can't see this house from the road. It's not like these big places. Let's go to Newport, Rhode Island, where all the houses are saying, look at me, I'm big on you. She doesn't do that at all. So this is just for people. She invites her friends and family of that nature. So they, um, her real destiny is to get married, okay, preferably by the time she's 21, because after that, So as we look at the house, do you think it's symmetrical? This part is This part, maybe, some of it. Well, actually, if we look at the section, it's just in the four-court walls, the street facade. Yes, that's certainly symmetrical, horizontally, vertically. But what we have on the right is this wing, which is done at the same time that the house is built. And what that does is that houses the whole servant's operation, the kitchen, etc. Normally that would be underneath the house. Well, she can't do that. There's no basement. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes they put it in the back of the house. Well, she's not going to do that because that's a view of the lake. Mm -hmm. Hence this wing. Uh, the story is there was a plan to do a wing on the other side. It never happens. But there's a few illusions also as we look at this. First of all, these shutters that are closed, if we open them up, there's no window behind there. It's yeah. just a wall. It's just so that she can have this perfect alignment, this perfect mm -hmm. symmetry. She thought symmetry in a, in a design, not only in buildings, but in gardens, made to make the structure or the feature not only beautiful to look at, but very comfortable to live in. Now, one other thing is if we look above the front door, and some of you have already gone, you know that's the front door. The window that's, the shutters that are open, can you see anything through that window in the second floor? Yes. Can you see something, another window? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and can we see anything through that second window? Can you see? Can you Three. 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 Three is excellent. Well, actually, the window, when we're looking through that window, what you're looking at is a mirror. And the window is a reflection uh -huh. of itself. And the trees are right behind us uh -huh. here. So that's her way of bringing light and nature into the house. We'll see more of it when we go. The window? How is it? 
Okay, uh, any questions? Is this a concept that she had developed with this other the designer that she wrote the book about? Or? With the mirror? Yeah. She uses a lot of mirrors. Okay, was this a common thing to uh, Specifically to have a reflection? That I don't know. Okay. This is the only time she uses it, really, that we know of. Um, okay, so any, any questions? It's okay to take photographs, just no flash, if you, if you don't mind. And if you silence the cell phones, I won't have it. Um, so in terms of probably wouldn't have seen because it was so she said, but it's the source of some of the finest novels like Eat the Phone uh, in summer. Quite desolate. 
And she called in an ugly wooden house in a half an acre block. So she didn't like it that much. But she did like houses. And she wrote a short story in 1892 called The Fullness of Life. Because if she had a regular door, she'd have to have two of them, right? right. So this way she kind of gets away with it. All the fixtures you see, by the way, on the windows and everything are all original windows. So are these all just uh, pieces that are similar to what you would have had here? Yes. I'm sure there's plenty of photographs and documentation of what she decorated the house with. Unfortunately, there isn't. This is one of the photographs over here. It's kind of a classic looking big house library. The wooden details of quarters on oak. And if you look across the room on that easel, you'll see a picture of the room from 1905. And these are one of the few photographs we actually have of the interior of the house. <clears throat> and even though the furniture we're looking at today, the couches and the lamps and everything, These ceilings are 12 and a half feet high. And this is called the drawing room. So, does anybody remember why they call it a drawing room? From withdrawing? You would withdraw, that's right. So, go back to Edith's time, they're having dinner in the dining room. Uh, dinner's over, the men started having cigars, smoking cigars, and having fun. Yet the women would leave the room, they would withdraw to another room, we call it the dining room. So it was originally called the withdrawing room, and then they just shortened it to the drawing room. So that's what happened. Um, the rug, this is about three months old. We just had it woven. It's an Austrian design. And if you look at the photograph on the, um, uh, some of the photographs on the easel over there, you'll see that it's the same kind of lattice pattern. Mm -hmm. um, that's So this is a pretty big dining room and a pretty big house. 
So what's missing in this room? Chandelier. Right, there's no mm -hmm. chandelier. He just didn't think that kind of overhead lighting enhanced a woman's complexion, is her quote uh -huh. for, her auto, for her autobiography. Yeah. So she's going with the candles. The other thing that's missing is the long banquet table. You know where the husband at one end and the wife at the other? You can't even talk to the people around the other end of the table. Different, different to see. So to her, first of all, there's no hierarchy. Really the question people ask is, okay, so the maids lived upstairs, where did the, where did the servants, the male servants live? They lived above the stables. So that was a good amount of separation. Okay, we're going down two flights here. Stairs is the original ice box. Operation. Mm -hmm. There's the vertical doors for the um, dumb waiter to send the cooked food up to the butler's pantry. And this part of the room is the ceiling is made of brick. So, what's that about? Well, this is called the Roman barrel ceiling. It's very supportive architecturally. It was holding up the terrace, but it needed some help. So, hence these I beams that are not mm -hmm. Some of the original foundation, wooden lab, we've probably seen that before. The white marble that you see throughout the house comes from the quarry in the adjacent town of Lee. This of the room was. It's a pretty big room. I tell you, it was not the dining room for the servants. Why? How did you know that? Well, You're going to get a gold star. I'm going to do the wash. <laughs> Let's go see. Very good. <laughs> 